Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and today we are back in Moonshine Inc. with Patch 1.1. They just released a pretty major update to the game and I'm quite excited to check it out. And that is um, of course because I did have some input into it as well on the sidelines and behind the scenes partially, but I did make a video of uh, my suggestions and you can check out that video right over there and um, also now we're going to see what they actually made of this this is the usual process when you get feedback from players and so on that um, you take that feedback and then apply it in the way that you see most sensible and that means usually and i know that from first-hand experience that you don't one-to-one -one take what was suggested and I'm really excited to check it out what their solutions were uh, to some of the design flaws in this game because previously it was really nice great theme and so on but especially the end game was suffering from the game being too easy it had an inverted difficulty curve and I'm looking forward to seeing how they now with the suggestions that were made have been able to turn that around or not we shall find out let's get into it I think the best way to check it out would be to first try out in sandbox so that we get there pretty much instantly the early game mechanics like your first brews and how they have changed and then go forward and see some more complex brewing where everything's already discovered and you have the best equipment available and yeah let's start with easy times no well previously that was the hardest part of the game the start <laughs> okay, that is that is a lucky draw if I've ever seen one. <laughs> Two absolutely atrocious workers. <laughs> oh my! I, can I can I go for no one, please? Can I just do it myself? But of course we go for sixty nine percent there, and of course he accepts. This is the magic number, you know. So uh, we just take David. I mean, we don't need a slow learner party element anymore. Elias has just had a few too much, <laughs> too many moonshine um, bottles there um, under his bed, and um, brain, brain be gone. But yes, so the starting point here, of course, is to just do some crafting. I'm, uh, I've already crafted an open fermentation tank, the one star here, and now it's all about the distillation. We don't have any gas-powered stuff. And thus, I'm uh, going to select one of these. Basically, uh, oh well, this one has no power but a little reflux. So uh, I, I think we, I think we take this one. It's just 2,500. Oh, that's the cheapest too. Okay, well, uh, let's go for that. That was a quick one to be crafted, right? Uh, go to the map and what can we buy? Well, basically nothing. But well, that's that's all good. 100 kilos of everything. That's the normal amount of uh, purchase of sugars, as you all know. So uh, how about uh, 100 gas as well? Yeah, yeah. Let's just buy this. Of course, we don't need gas. Oh, why? Your your T-shirt is damn ugly, mate. And thus it begins. Oh, look, it's placing with smoke already in place. <laughs> Perfect. And this is where it begins. Let's uh, see what we can craft. Well, uh, just create a new batch and we're doing the, the usual. Plop in two ingredients, two of our basic ingredients and see what we get out. How about a, a bit of a um, sour sweet brew. Beet sugar and um, turbinado. And now, oh, there, there we have it. Okay, there we found a recipe and we have the match, of course, 100%, and plop it in there, and set up bottling afterwards. Okay, that's that's looking good. Unknown recipe, here we come. Create this one, and set up the fermentation. Let's see what has changed. Okay, so uh, I already see some differences down here, and that is also quite different with the um, the different flavor points. Previously. Yeasts were only giving you, oh, only giving you two <laughs> of the flavors, and they were randomized across the whole thing, depending on the temperature. This 
is quite interesting. They changed it. The simp... Oh. I, I have played a little bit before just to see what's in there. And the more advanced yeasts that you can choose, they have more flavors than just one. Previously, all uh, yeasts had, I believe it was two flavors. And they were randomized in between here for uh, what points you would get. And at perfect temperature, you would get zero. Also, again, watch my previous video where I was suggesting how that was uh, not necessarily the best game mechanic ever. Um, but now we do have, as you can see here, no, that was present before as well, we do have one main uh, taste for these simple yeasts. And we can just choose the one that seems to fit the best. All right, so um, how do we do this? I think sour, the sour one, Simple Kindle, makes the most sense here. It has a maximum sugar of 18%, which we are way beyond. <laughs> and let's see. Uh, what was that? 18% and 14%. All right. Oh, they've added arrows. Oh, uh, but be observant, please. Be, be observant, Kerob. Do you see this shade down here? As we approach optimal sugar levels... Yes, as we approach these optimal sugar levels, 14%, this blue part of the bar extends. Very good. So, um, with that... Ooh, there, there disappears the other one. The, the bitter one, which we didn't want to have. But you see, this one is still in there the, for the sweet. Right? If we take this away... Yeah, there's 5% sweet there. I think this is the optimal setup, but if we would, were to go even lower... You see how this extends and if that bar was or if the um, bar had extended the shading had extended beyond this point this point would have turned into sour which is the main taste of this yeast that's an interesting mechanic okay don't know if I like it yet but we shall find out this is so far this is make making it way more predictable and that's a good thing because it was just all over the place. And it was possible to cheese it really bad. But this seems to be a good solution here. It seems a little lucky that we got a sweet there. Because these are randomized. Randomized with all the undesired tastes that you have. And the undesired tastes are everything that isn't the taste of the yeast. So it's, it could be any of these here <laughs> and we were a little lucky here to get the sweet so as you can see we have a really good match for the recipe let's do two days worth of fermentation and create this one david on the job please do take all the, the heavy stuff to carry we we like to see you in pain and no, that's not out of pure sadism. It's just to uh, repay him for his uh, pay, which is way too high. Two days later, there we have it. Oh, let's see what we can do in the distillation. All right. All right. Oh, there's water there. 1x water. Does that actually do anything? Doesn't seem like it. That's weird. But yeah, that's uh, what you would get out of it in the end. Flavored water. Ah, and beautiful. Look at this. So, uh, mm. we have 35% ethanol requirement. Oh, yeah. I, th I think I see what would work. We, hmm, we have a little bit too much taste now. And we do have too much ethanol as well. So, we actually would want to put one of these out and that is the perfect one to take because we have too much sour and just a little bit too much sweet so if we take the 68 out of here we're getting really damn close in terms of taste and in terms of ethanol content so that seems to be good and I think um, no that's not what we want to do that that one was the perfect one yep looking good so let's create it two days 17 hours feature request Two hours later. <laughs> we do need another time acceleration. We do need a something that is about four times as much as this. <laughs> please, 
please give me all... Well, actually, the 4x is probably good to have. It's It should be going 1x, 4x, 16x, because you're 4xing it each time. Otherwise, you don't have the same distance in between them. And this is just way too slow, as you see. Like, two times that speed would be quite acceptable. Three days later... Awaiting ingredients and bottling. Let's see what has changed here. Um, from first look, nothing. But that is not correct. Because, look at this. We can put water in, but look at what it does to the taste. You, you, what? If we put in 60 liters of water into 28 liters of alcohol, do you say that the taste is is being diminished? Really? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that that actually is exactly what happens here. And we do have... Uh, so if you increase it, the same thing happens, by the way. If you decrease it, just put water in, taste goes down to basically nothing. Uh, and... I would even say that it's probably a little too harsh. Like if you're, let's see, let's just think about this. So we have 29 liters of this stuff. If we put in 29 liters there, we add zero taste. That, that is a lot of diminishing. I don't think that the water would be tasteless exactly at 16% alcohol. Uh, I think they overdid it a little bit here with the uh, dependence, but um, well, let's see how it plays, right? So we were really damn close with this brew and we just need to put one liter of water in and it's pretty much spot on. That seems all right. Uh, time to sell one to eight hours. Oh, we could go. Oh, that's also neat. That they are giving a uh, kind of time frame instead of like they did previously where it's just sells best and so on. This is much better a, um, a market to see the rel relative sales speed of uh, what you're putting up there. And of course, the faster you sell, the less um, attention you get from pesky police. So... Uh, we're going to, this master masterpiece of brew, we're going to sell for 75. And let's bottle it. Ah, that was Donald's recipe. Number one. Also a recipe matched, 98%. Nice. And now, let's try out where we would be in the mid-game. Where we are brewing brandies, for instance. Let's try to make a, um, a pretty high-class brandy. Empty start again, but with loads of cash and hopefully better. <laughs> now, okay, well, at least they are working and not partying. Uh, that's 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 better than before. Can't complain, can I? Just upgrading the workshop as well so that we don't have to wait for too long. Uh, if everything is set to have everything unlocked already, uh, let me remind myself what I need for making brandies. The electric press, I would say. Is that, is that something that you have uh, in the mid-game, though? Electric press is in advanced pressing, so you would potentially have that. One thing that I still don't quite like is the linear progression of some of these um, widgets that you have. Electric press is just outright better than manual press. Okay, I, I can see that that would be the case. This one is also cheaper, but it's not cheaper enough for, <laughs> for that to warrant um, even considering to remain at the level of manual press. Also, I think what would be much better in terms of balance is if the electric press was just more efficient. But maybe less durable than the manual press and um, just had the same cleanliness value or something ar ar around that because then you would have to have a little bit more nuance in it right that you are that you have to uh, to weigh do you want to stay with a uh, a cheaper option that is much slower but outputs the same amount of quality or do you want to go for the faster one that is well that's better but um it costs you a fortune. 
that's certainly not a fortune in that case and maybe even make the manual press a little better <laughs> but you would be wanting to go for this just for the pure efficiency could even nerf the efficiency down even more and up this even more to make a nice little difference but yeah i don't like this linear balance of the uh, of the things that you can research it, it makes the game less interesting in that regard but um, i if we can just let's go for the manual one let's see what we can make ah uh, yeah let's see um, big tank big tank would be what we are at right ah this is new as well minimum flavor match okay so you do start out aha uh -huh, I, I see uh, minimum flavor match five it increases by five increases by another five and then increases by another five? So is this saying that you are actually, that we do need a 95% flavor match or something like, like this now? Or it starts at 70 and you end up at um, 90? Now that would make it a little bit more difficult, but I don't see necessarily why that would keep you from making anything. Let's see if we have these limitations now because we have all the technology, um, but yeah. Okay, that's, that's an interesting choice. I'm going to go for the big tank because that is readily available at that point in, in the game. And for... Yeah, I do want to go for, for the gas because I do have something to <laughs> point out there. A little bit funny. Um, the, old, the only faithful... Uh, we're going for this one, I guess. Yes. Let's do it. Seems to be a pretty simple one. Yep. No reflux whatsoever. Okay, well, let's go for it. Ah, we have a level up. And that's the guy who uh, had to craft all the little stuff. I wonder how much the other one, other one is getting. How far is he done? Okay, now yeah, we can just watch this. Uh, let's see. So from 208, he goes up to... Mm, let's see. They have been. He has been crafting for longer. He's been working for longer. And he's, he doesn't have to level up. All right, a quick quick point to make from a game design standpoint. Um, they should be rewarded XP proportionally to the build time of what they are constructing. Um, not the amount of items they are doing. Because otherwise, this is very exploitable. Just let them build cheap shit and you have can throw that away or sell it again or whatever. <laughs> and uh, you just get farm experience for in basically no time so uh, how much more did he get uh, choose specialization he's going to be our production manager Remington here has a, 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 a higher pay but how did we get him down to a lower pay than him uh, anyway uh, production it is promote him and okay the difference here wasn't la very large but still he should have, Everett here, should have gotten more XP overall because he was probably crafting for like almost eight, 18 hours-ish more than, not 12 hours-ish more than uh, Remington. But now we do have a production expert. So, going to buy like, uh, what do we need, 500 kilograms of everything. I mean, uh, household quantities, right? Um, that's that's what, what they're going for. All right, this is our setup, and I don't know if we even need this, but it doesn't matter, because we are going to brew a mid-game recipe. How about we go for a brandy that is uh, some, something like this, maybe? It's a little bit more complex, isn't it? Does need aging. Ah, let's keep it simple. Uh, what's the fruit? Because no further treatment is required. Banana, lemon, orange. Okay, well, that is good news here. We can indeed progress without having a perfect match. We can even progress. Uh, can I destroy this some more, please? Yeah. yeah, with a really poor match. That was one of the things that I was pointing out. Because you, if you have a deeper knowledge of the game, you can get away with this kind of stuff because you know what the yeasts are going to add or you have a plan and that makes things way more interesting and it seems to be the case so there's no more arbitrary limitation on actually starting to brew this stuff 
The only thing that seems to be limited is if you are scored with a recipe match or not later on when you have to when it comes to the scoring board as in uh, when you have the finished product does this product's taste match the recipe yes or no well it does have to have a certain match percentage at that point that's from what I understand right now but let's get this one matched up somewhat let's pretend we do not have the premium yeast in this place because we are simulating mid game not end game okay you know what I do have a plan the plan is we are going to choose ah uh, I unfortunately cannot see what types of turbo yeast I have here so that is unfortunate I would like to see the my options that I have here um, that would be easy to indicate in this tooltip because I want to know if there is one that does have a certain combination of bitter and sweet or sour and sweet or bitter and sour because I could use that to my advantage here if that was indicated in this tooltip I would be able to plan ahead but well Okay, this is a significant improvement over what was there before <laughs> already, but um, it can still be improved further. Let's see. Oh, I do know that um, some of those tastes will be potentially available. So let's let me make these three vectors that are required all a little too uh, too short. So a balanced taste profile, and we just need to up it. All right. Let's create it there. And Everett is, Everett? Remington is going to set up the fermentation. Uh, you what mate? <laughs> Sugar 100, what? Ah, okay, that was just, <laughs> as soon as I touched the slide, everything went back to normal. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay, these already have four tastes. And they are all salty. No, no, this one is good. Uh, no, it's acrid as well. Sweet and bitter. Well, we need those tastes. Yeah, you can see this nicely down there, right? At you are, uh, you see how the the bar is going, uh, going up and down here, the the shaded area, and with it, I'm converting some of these bubbles to other tastes. There, you see that. Like the the one that is included in the blue background is the one that is um, included in the yeast taste spectrum while the others are outside of it. So I just want to get, ah, damn it. I want to get this some more sour there to fully fill the, the, the taste spectrum that we need and then try to get rid of some salty and acrid afterwards. Ah, there we go. That's an interesting one. Um, just oh no oh no I wanted to convert this over this little one now down there I wanted to convert it over to sour as well but that is just beyond the maximum sugar of this one but this is looking good and it is looking quite interesting because you see that I didn't have the yeast to really get it to the place of having this much flavor naturally but through um, suboptimal conditions <laughs> and the correct use of the yeast, we do get some additional flavors, which we then have to contend with and massage out or in um, via these changes here. It is almost a little too much that is happening down here now. It is a very important um, feature. And as such, that's, that's a good thing that stuff is happening here. Um, I wonder if it is a little bit too much or not, but that is something that uh, would be shown after several hours of playing this and not just the first look, of course. So let's see what happens. But we now have settled for this. This is looking very good for bitter and sour and uh, we can get rid of a little sour. And I just hope that there is some jar in there that has sour and acrid because that would be fantastic. Uh, we can create this now. There doesn't seem to be a... Yeah, okay, if you can't make something with zero alcohol, because that just wouldn't work. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. But I do want to exclude the salty point there and create. Doesn't seem to be a limitation in this one either. Great. So you can make whatever you want. And after the fact, you're scored. Not along the way. There's no, but you shouldn't be doing this. This is not allowed. So it's good. 
get rid of all that stuff. Let's leave the in a creative game, leave the freedom to fail. <laughs> give give the players enough rope to hang them with, <laughs> hang themselves with. So here we have this one. Ah, uh, this looks like a three days later feature request. If you decide to not put in a higher time acceleration, I want to have an alarm clock. All right. There we go, Remington has done it. Oh, well, um, no. The fermentation has done it. Here we have it. So, uh, we can now set... Ah, right. Right, right, right. Um, right, yeah, yeah. So, flame rate. That was previously going in steps of 10%, wasn't it? And there were loads of steps in there that didn't make any sense. That didn't change anything. <laughs> so, uh, it looks like... And, oh, wait a sec, tails are not there. Okay, we can't use 100. That includes two tails, so we would be able to do this one. That doesn't have what we need, though. <gasps> this almost does. No! No, no, no. Can oh, there we go. Is that better? Uh, no, no, it isn't. No, it isn't. Ah, damn it. Damn it, damn it. So, problem being here, yeah, we now need to have a good way to either have enough flavor to really push this. Oh, can we? What? Oh, okay. This one now includes the water. <laughs> uh, we can water it down severely if we go for that. Uh, can we somehow choose how much water we want? That would be fantastic. But, or it would be completely overpowered, right? <laughs> so, because that water would still have some of the taste in it. Um, but anyway, let's see. So what I want to say is that now we have the, the difficult choice that we do have the option to pull out some of the taste, but um, that gives us way too much ethanol content. We can also try to pull out some of the others but that would do um, the kind of the same so yeah I think we kind of need to leave it at this because now we can really check out what the uh, fortification does okay now let's go on but nope wait there is more this to me seems a little odd <laughs> 33 kilos of natural gas? Really? Um, I think I need to do a little bit of a calculation here. All right, so we do have 45 megajoules of uh, heating potential in LNG per kilo. That means our 33 kilograms of gas does have uh, 1,485 megajoules of heating power and the amount of energy required to bring 330, uh, no, 363 liters of water to boiling temperature, 100 degrees, is less than one-tenth of that. <laughs> Okay, 122 megajoules. So that means that in order to get it to 100 degrees, which you kind of do and kind of don't, um, but over a pro prolonged period of time, so it does require some more energy than that, um, is 122 megajoules. As a reminder, what we got out of this was 1,485 megajoules. So yeah. That's more than 10 times as much. Now, if we wanted to boil away all the water, what would that be? That would, like, so that you only have dry powder left in your uh, distillery. That would take less than a gigajoule. So we are actually putting in more power than it would require to completely evaporate everything, including all the water. So something is kind of wrong here. <laughs> Some, please, please, uh, Miss, Mr. Physicist over at Moonshine Inc., could you could you take a look at the actual calculation and see if there's 
maybe a factor 10 wrong or so. But all right, that aside, let's get, let's get into the final step and see how that is different. Even though we've just melted the metal in our distillery. Uh, we're going to go here, then wait for a long time and we're done. Okay, now uh, set up the bottling. Cool, so now we have the pretty decent matching profile there. Recipe doesn't match, but mm. Mm. if you don't match ethanol requirements for water fruit, yes, uh, we know. But let's uh, take a look what fortification and that does. Um, why can't we add water? No, uh, why can't we add spirits? Or, uh, maybe we didn't buy anything? No, I thought I did. But yeah, you see, that that is matching the recipe. I wouldn't call it recipe matching. It is just ethanol matched, not recipe matched, because recipe would be the whole thing here, right? Um, this is now way harder than it was, which is great, because it was dead simple before and not in a good way. Uh, so yeah, we can now choose to either keep it as is, uh, uh, a little spicy or uh, yeah or pour so much water in it that we have a match of like 70 something percent there there 70 what do we get for this 95 it's the taste match that's 70 quality and then oh that goes up 77 okay that's not too bad when we match the ethanol it gets about right we ended up with a little bit of a weak tasting brew though. So that's also good to note that ethanol content seems to be one of the primary factors while taste isn't necessarily such a big deal. We see that uh, the ethanol content outweighs the actual taste of the thing. So the, the flavor profile here is severely diminished in quality but um, as we approach the correct ethanol and match the recipe that brings it back to a higher potential quality all right and the last step is to just bottle it that's excellent this plays way better than before <laughs> one thing that is still rather uh, unbalanced i would say is the pricing of the cars i 15k that one batch made us 15k I why uh, like profit or would make us that much profit uh, why is a car or the best car in the game just 15k uh, okay I buy it and we're going to sell all our brandy to the same location they will tire of it real fast but uh, there we go and now it is time for our final test and that is endgame. Let's see how the new mechanics work in endgame. Now revolution we create. And there we go. Just finished. The revolution is here. That's a beast. All right, let's put it there. It's slightly larger than our previous one. Just ever so slightly. 800 liters capacity. Ooh. Okay, this one looks interesting. Don't think I've ever uh, made it before. Gaia's gift. And that's 65%. <laughs> that's, that's a uh, sharpish whiskey. Um, let's uh, use this one. Post distillation is not required. Turbo yeast. And that will allow us to overshoot in terms of taste. And that, that's going to be interesting to see. So uh, we are going to choose this recipe. And now I'm going to figure it out. So this is about right for what we have here. Wheat, wheat malt and barley malt. And uh, the taste profile match isn't perfect. But uh, d does it have to? Probably not. And uh, this is the best I can do uh, within well, the reasonable time frame here. But now, considering that it's endgame, we consider to have premium yeast. So let's see what happens if we overshoot in terms of taste. And just make sure that we have enough of everything. Uh, well, that's a <laughs> stretch for the bitter taste. But we're going to find some extra. So, uh, quite overshooting, that one. And now let's create that and set up fermentation. Let's see what we get. Oh, that's a lot of taste stuff there. We do have temperature control now and can finally see what that does. 
it changes the sizes of these little circles. And if you go to non-optimal, let's see, how does that work? So, salty? Oh, do they have different, different optimum? Like the bitter is all going smaller. No, not all. Trying to figure out how this works from a game mechanics point of view. Have a look at how the taste profile in general changes when you look at the uh, graph over there. As we change the temperature around, that's a lot of taste. Not really want to taste, but uh, it is a lot of taste. And I've actually set it and chose to set it to optimal sugar. Because that gets rid of most of the uh, unwanted tastes in there that are a little too strong. And now, it's a good quantity. Let's see, how long does that take? Oh, four days. Hmm, all right. But uh, yes, we did not manage to somehow weasel our way around this and get the perfect result straight up. That's our setup using optimal sugar content. And we do get these extra taste profile uh, quantities for bitter, sweet and acrid and four days of fermentation time. Let's go. And it's done. Everett has done a job. Let's set up fermentation, uh, no, distillation now. So, uh, same as before. Why is there one X water there now? Instead of 17 X water as we had before, something, uh, I don't know. But, um, okay, we do need three heads, four hearts. So this is minimum for what we can do. And we could go to there. So these two options we have. And now we want to reduce, uh, we do want to reduce here towards the tails because that is where we need to get, well, we need to get rid of this one that has loads of taste that we don't need or want. Then um, just some others like this one can get rid. We do want to up the ethanol content. Some salty and acrid would be good, but I do want a bit of overshoot because I'm going to fortify. Uh, let's see, so salty and, do we have salty and acrid? There. Yeah, that's looking good. 60%, overshooting everywhere. Let's see what we can make of this. I have a good feeling here. So, 100, <laughs> what is this? Oh man, 137 kilograms of liquefied natural gas. Yeah, um, that melts the, the whole yard, basically. <laughs> but yes, with this step, I'm way more satisfied now that we do need to have these considerations. Like, how do I want to approach getting the correct taste profile and the correct uh, ethanol content at the same time? It is no longer trivial to do so as it was in previous versions, which completely destroyed the end game for me and pro probably for many others who have just had figured out the puzzle and the puzzle was very simple to figure out. And now it is an actual puzzle, a fun one. This is a great mechanic and uh, the randomized nature of it doesn't feel too random. Um, so it's also different every time you make the same recipe. It's very nice. So, uh, we are ending up with 60%, slightly too much taste, which means that we should be able to fortify now the 5% that are missing and uh, hopefully end up at a really good match. We create this one and time to set up the bottling. Uh, Gaia's Gift, number two. Why number two? Because it's batch number two. So we do have our profile here, which is slightly too large and yes. Yes. Oh, that is almost perfect. Oh, look at that. There. Ethanol content, perfect. And that flavor match, really damn good. So, yes, not perfect. I think perfect is 102 points, something. Um, of course, we didn't have the uh, employee effect here. It's easy to... That, that would have been 100% otherwise. Um... But yeah, that's excellent. We do have 1,000 liters bought, so that, that will last us a little while. Uh, un unless our party animal is stealing them. I, I don't think we will notice a few liters missing. 
Uh, but yeah, th this was actually way more interesting than uh, in previous iterations of the game. This is solid gameplay. Can't really complain about it. Uh, apart from, of course, melting your entire distillery into a puddle of uh, liquid metal. Uh, <laughs> but other than that, it's really quite good. Um, if the density of effects, additional effects and flavors is the right one, would be shown over time as uh, one really plays the game but also gets used to it. I think these mechanics are now feeling like they all fit together as they were originally intended. And I'm, um, I'm glad that I was able to help out a little bit in giving them the prod that was needed to make that happen, if I may say so. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this little look at the game in state 1.1. And I definitely in this state, I can wholeheartedly recommend the game. It's fun and great, great puzzle game in one way or another <laughs> with a fun theme. Anyway, hope you enjoyed and see you guys next time. Yeah.